Awesome. And what is your, you can also share, what is your favorite Christmas dish? What is your favorite Christmas dish? Hey, Ramona, how are you? Hey, I'm good. And you? Good to see you again. Thank you. You as well. Yeah. yeah. Definitely prime rib. Give me prime rib all day. Totally will take a prime <laughs> rib. Don't forget the sauce. I want that. You sound like my sister with crab legs. She's like, can we have some crab legs? Yes, please. So we got a surf and turf type of crew tonight. Dr. Tatum. Surf and turf. You hear that? That's good. Surf and turf, you know. What's your favorite dish for the holidays? Crab legs seem to be winning. Crab legs seem to be winning. Who wants Dungeness versus Alaskan? Who, who takes Dungeness versus Alaskan crab legs? French toast casserole. I like that. Uh, I like that. Dr. Tatum, what's your favorite dish for the holidays? Uh, I'm a pie person. Pie? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mac and cheese. Okay. Hey, Jennifer. Good to see Hi, you. Hi, how are you? Good to see Good you too. See you. Yeah. All right, we're gonna start. And so thank you guys for being with us today. I'm gonna share the presentation uh, with all of you. All right, so my name is Dominie Head and I'll be leading uh, this session today. Uh, we will definitely get you out of here by seven o'clock. Uh, this is Pathways for Prosperity. Um, I lead the Pontiac Regional Chamber as well as the Pontiac United Education Coalition. Uh, we've built the Pontiac United Education Coalition in response to what I believe is a very hard chore. Uh, chore. I think uh, Andrew Yang said it best. He's like, we should be paying our parents the most money because they're creating the next generation of workers. Um, so I really believe that. And if I could do that and wave my magic wand, I would do that for you guys. Um, but we know that uh, for parents, one of the biggest tasks there are or is um, is to raise their children to be successful and make sure they can take care of themselves and be uh, uh, powerful citizens within our community. So uh, we, we'll have uh, Dr. Alfred Tatum be our guest speaker today and talk about a little bit more about uh, advancements in that. And we'll... Uh, continue to share what the opportunities are that we're creating within the city of Pontiac and the regional area. So again, my name is Dominique Head. My background is uh, I'm, a I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, Chanel Weatherspoon, she is also here on the call. She can't speak right now, but I'll speak for her. Chanel is uh, has over 20 years experience in Fortune 500 companies, has led many organizations and startups and organizations uh, it has a found a profound experience of learning to read and teaching her children to read and really wants to celebrate that with all parents and families. Ashlyn? Good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Ashlyn Curry. I'm an early literacy consultant here at Oakland Schools, but I also have a near dear nonprofit called We Love Lit, where I work with families and communities to lift up literacy in our community. And I am so excited to be with you this evening. Judith. Good evening. It's great to be here with you all. I am the CEO of the Mindfulness Institute, and I'm also on the board of the Pontiac United Education Coalition. Absolutely love bringing my professional work as a psychotherapist to the families, growing their social emotional intelligence. Great to be here. I'm glad you're here. Great. All right, we're going to give Judith a little time to 
share about the mindfulness skills and also share, uh, walk you through a little exercise. Judith, take it away. Oh, great, great. So everyone, well-being encompasses those circles that you see there. It's your physical well-being we often think of and definitely mind and mental well-being and uh, those emotional well-beings that really kind of tell us whether we are, are going to take the best actions on that day. And then we all um, practice perhaps our spiritual well-being. And when we practice mindfulness skills, they are um, helping in all of these areas. You don't really separate them. And on the outside of this circle, you can see the five core skills of mindfulness, awareness and attention are really critical for like, where am I at when I'm speaking to my children? You know, we ask that of the teachers a lot of time in our meetings. It's like um, being aware of, are you frustrated, irritated, annoyed, or uh, do you have access to patience and kindness and understanding and ease? And we're going to help you with an exercise today that will help you self-regulate. You see, that's uh, number one, another one of the core skills. And um, when you're aware, you can be more intentional if we want to move out of those depleting emotions and attitudes from which we don't necessarily like to act and behave from or react from. And so if you will, um, with all the loving kindness in my heart, I want to bring to you the experience of um, self-regulating in a way that is a research-based best practice that we share with the children. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later today. So if you will, I'd like you to bring your attention to your breath. And I'd like you to breathe a little slower and this is done with your eyes open. And when I say bring your attention to your breath, it's like bringing your attention to the palm of your hand. You just did that right now or bringing your attention to the heel of your right foot. You just did that right now. And what I'd like you to bring your attention to is to your chest area, specifically your heart. And as you begin to breathe a little deeper and a little slower, imagine your breath is coming right in through your heart and out through your heart. It's just an imagining the breath is coming right in and out. And if you can slow your breath down to maybe five breaths in through the nose and five breaths out through the nose, it's a rhythmic breath that you'd like to have, whatever is comfortable for you. Just be sure it's a little slower and deeper than usual, keeping your focus on the heart. We're going to add one more thing. We're going to add creating an elevated emotion, such as gratitude or appreciation or care. And you can do that by thinking of someone that you love or something. Maybe it's a pet or maybe it's even a place, some place that you really enjoy and move it into actually feeling the appreciation for that person, pet or place. Actually feel that. And if you've lost your focus on the heart, just bring it back as you continue to feel and breathe. Feeling the appreciation and breathing a little deeper and slower. And what you're doing right now as you continue the breath while I'm talking is you're synchronizing the systems of your body, your cardiovascular, your hormonal, your uh, immune system, your nervous system, all of those are synchronizing into a measurable state called coherence. It's an intention that we can move, we can use so to move from those frustrating or irritating emotions that certainly don't give us a sense of well being. So that moment to moment, you can self-regulate and move into a greater capacity of loving kindness or responding versus reacting. And so this is some of the work that we do with the children at the PUEC, and we train the teachers to do that as well. And we ultimately are building greater resilience. Dominique, if you want to take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Judith. You're welcome. Uh, so we want to start this conversation with the I Promise. Uh, you'll find out, out a little bit more about Rosanna. Rosanna is one of the visionary council members. And uh, the Pontiac, city of Pontiac has the Pontiac Promise Zone. And so we thought it would be a very fitting book to uh, give to all the kindergartners to talk about how we're working to improve educational outcomes and promising them that we're diligently working to make a more successful environment for them to learn, participate, and have fun in. So uh, we give away this book to kindergartners uh, when they start kindergartners. So we do this during kindergarten roundup in participation with our schools that are part of the PUC. So I just want to acknowledge those schools. So we have Flex Academy, Success Virtual Learning Center, uh, PAE, Pontiac Academy for Excellence, Pontiac School District, 
uh, Walton Charter Academy, Great Lakes Academy, and Oakside Prep. Uh, those are the schools that are participating in the PUEC uh, leadership calls. Uh, we also have uh, ATAP who participates along with them as well. So those are schools that we work with to do a kindergarten roundup and provide that book to the students at kindergarten roundup. Um, so they have a keepsake for their their career. And so we really hope to share that with more students as we go out, go throughout this journey of building the Pontiac United Education Coalition. <clears throat> so what we promise to cover today, we promise to cover uh, out of school time supports, home and school connections and the PUC connections. As you can see, these are our partners in the work that we're doing. And we're really excited to share how we've uh, gone about creating some really great opportunities for students and parents alike uh, through the PUEC and Pontiac Reads. So Pontiac Reads Literacy Collaborative, Pontiac Reads Mission and Vision. Pontiac Reads is a member of the National Campaign for Grade Level Reading. Our mission is to ensure that all children in the city of Pontiac read, write, speak, listen, and visually represent proficiently. Our vision is to invest in the Pontiac children's right to literacy, access, and equity by intentionally and explicitly providing community-wide support for literacy development from birth to third grade. So this is uh, the members of the Visionary Council. As you can see, we have professors from Oakland University, uh, literacy consultants from Oakland schools, and then representatives from General Motors uh, and other entrepreneurial endeavors. So um, these are the, the group of people who brought together Pontiac Reads and have established it for uh, the community and the region. This is the structure of Pontiac Reads. So we have the Visionary Council, which I just showed you. And then we have these collaboratives, early literacy, summer learning, school attendance, health and well-being. Uh, we also have our graduate assistant who works in our early child care space, uh, and then also co a coordinator. Uh, and then we have the community at large. I'm going to turn over to Ashlyn. Thank you, Dominique. And so as we think about this work that we're doing in Pontiac Race, that we want to really lift up the 6,000 hours that kids are awake. And we know that 1,000 hours, uh, they're in the school. But we know that schools can't do this work alone. And as the Pontiac Reads team and Visionary Council leaders, what we're our goal is to tap into those 5,000 hours because it provides a fertile opportunity for increasing literacy in after-school spaces. That means families, homes, communities, and churches and organizations. And I'm so excited to share some of the work that we're doing in these out-of-school spaces. As we think about lifting up literacy in our community, we're gonna hear from Dr. Afford Tatum, who is a leading researcher in the nation. He has over 18 years of higher education experience, and he is passionate about relationship building and inclusive leadership. He is a leading authority and one of the nation's prominent educator scholars of African-American voice literacy development. You see a series or collection of his books that he's written, but I think the most important thing that we want to lift up is that Dr. Tatum is a husband and a father, and he has two young adult males that he has raised, and they're doing great things in the community. So we're excited to have Dr. Afford Tatum here. So if you just join me in giving him a warm welcome with using your emojis or gestures on the Zoom call. So welcome, Dr. Tatum. Thank you for the invitation. I'm going to share uh, one slide with you uh, shortly, but I have to say this. <laughs> I have to say this uh, uh, first. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about how we uh, build communities uh, around uh, literacy, and I'm going to start here. Uh, as a child, the thing that made the most significant difference for me was reading five pounds of books per month. Uh, I've been doing that for about 30 years now. I own about 10,000 books. This is not something that you can get in schools. 
Uh, this requires that we think about powerful approaches uh, outside of the classes. Uh, for many of you who have uh, children, I, I saw a lot of you enter your, your names and young children. It, it's very important to communicate early on that every word, every idea, every book, and every topic belongs to you. And so when my sons were young, one of the things I did uh, every night was put a single pillow page before they went to sleep. That was just to make sure they uh, cozied up next to a word or, or an idea. And then we would take these pillow pages and have rich conversations uh, and discussions. Unfortunately, we are experiencing great challenges uh, in Pontiac in Michigan. I'm going to share a slide and offer a few things uh, for consideration from a community uh, perspective. Can you see the slide? Yes. Um, the one that says four-year average growth rate of Black students? Yes. Okay. I just want to go uh, through this because I just heard Dr. Curry mention that schools alone are powerless to protect the literacy development of our children. This makes me excited about Pontiac Reed. But in this box, you'll see the four-year average growth rate of Black students in Oakland schools, Pontiac, and Michigan. Unfortunately, uh, this is one of the few states that has a declining uh, growth rate. Uh, this is something that should concern us very deeply. And then Michigan, for example, said it wanted to improve its reading proficiency rate in uh, 2012. It was at 69%. But at the bottom of the left-hand side, in 2019, this was true for 80% of Black students. So we had 80% of Black students who were not reading proficiently. Um, that's something that uh, we need to rally around. And we need to move beyond these uh, descriptors because somehow it has become natural to believe that our young students are not supreme readers and writers. That message and that reality uh, must change. And so I'm gonna offer four quick uh, bullet points that I think are critically uh, important. One, for every parent here or every teacher or every educator, how do we develop an advanced literacy playbook? This is one that will guide you, that makes sure your kids have meaningful reading and meaningful writing experiences. As early as kindergarten, you want to make sure your kids are reading and they're writing. And then as a community, how do you start thinking about planning advanced literacy institutes? Moving beyond what the state expectations are or what the district expectations are, something that lines, aligns very neatly with Pontiac Reads. Also, take a look at uh, the state literacy plan. Michigan has a state literacy plan that gives permission for our students to underperform. That should disturb everyone in this call. We are not turning our students over to a district or state that gives permission for their underperformance. So we do want to do that because you can build coalitions, not just within Pontiac, but with other districts, and then build legislative coalitions. We have to change that conversation. If you've never saw a annual research report on the state of Black reading in Michigan, that's because it does not exist. So demand an annual research report on the state of Black reading for Michigan students and start making sure that this state uh, focuses on the highest levels of reading and writing, not just in the elementary grades, but in the middle schools and the high schools. I love this conversation. I love what Pontiac Reed stands for because there is a need to launch an unprecedented messaging campaign against low literacy. It can be, for example, the rise of Pontiac literacy or building on Pontiac Reads. And then whenever someone's educating your child or educating our children, 
There must be no contrition. Recognize that we are in a fight against erasure. In some places, there is an unlikelihood that a large percent of students will never become supreme readers and writers. And then anyone, and I put this in red, anyone who makes excuses for black males literacy development or black students literacy development is an enemy of black students literacy development. We cannot accept rationale or reasons why our students are not the best readers and best writers and best thinkers uh, in this nation. So no contrition. If we think about coalesc uh, uh, coalescing around these community strategies, we're gonna build something extremely powerful that uh, communicates that is not just about reading and writing for our students, it's about their lives and shaping trajectories that we know that our young students deserve. Well, so thank, like, go ahead. well, thank you, Dr. Tatum. We hear the urgency that you are sending, and we thank you for sharing with us to so just to lift up the importance of making sure that our students, our children are advanced readers and advanced learners, and by any means necessary. So thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Are you leaving us now, Dr. Tatum, or do you have time uh, for a question? Well, I have time for questions. I'll be here for another okay. five minutes. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anyone have a question for Dr. Tatum? Hello, Dr. Tatum. Thank you for taking... Um... Oh, I'm sorry. Would you want to speak? Oh, go ahead. Um, I have a question. What if you have a student that is falling behind and have problems reading? Do you have any solutions for that? Yeah, one of the things that um, one of the things um, uh, that's most important is more reading uh, and more writing. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we break down any barriers that prevent students from reading the words, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we're not postponing any academic uh, 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 intellectual uh, development. And so I write about how do you make sure you break down barriers at the word level sentence level and text level. Here's the ultimate aim though. <clears throat> if we get students reading at minimum 500 words an hour and writing 75 to 100 words an hour, you're gonna start seeing some gains. And so you have to have clear images of where you want that student to go. Thank you. And I just say that because we have some students who are struggling readers or writers, they're reading less than 50 words a day, and they're writing zero words per day. And so we really want to uh, take a quantitative approach to the amount of reading and writing that takes place, despite the frustration that it may cause initially for some of our students. They'll eventually come around. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate that. Any other questions for Dr. Tatum? Dr. Tatum, when will you be back to Michigan? Soon. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you. And uh, um, Ashlyn dropped in the chat uh, his book. So if you're interested in finding out more, Teaching Black Boys, uh, elementary grades reading. It's in the chat for you to grab. Um, Dr. Sam, we really appreciate your time and thank you for sharing those words of wisdom uh, with us. And, you know, the rest of this call will really be about the trajectory that you spoke of. Uh, it's really critical that we get our students on a trajectory that makes sense, mm -hmm. um, not only for today, but for the future. And some of those things are not yet determined. And so we have to lead them in a way that they will be able to fulfill on their lives in the future. Thank you for allowing me to join the community tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your Thank evening. You. Have a great class tonight. Good.
All right, so we're going to talk, uh, spend some time talking now about pathways to prosperity. Um, over the last three, almost four years, we've been working towards creating these pathways to prosperity, and we're really excited about the partners that we've created in in this journey. Um, we want to now make sure we're extending this opportunity to you and those that you love. This could mean your family. This could mean uh, your nieces and nephews, um, your grandchildren. Uh, we think it's hypercritical that we take full advantage of the opportunity that Dr. Tatum talked about with literacy. And uh, our goal is to make sure we make it easier for you as a parent to navigate what can be a very difficult educational system. Uh, and for some of you and for some of the people you love, they may have not had a really great experience in the educational system. So our goal as leaders, the Visionary Council, along with uh, Pontiac United Education Board, the Pontiac Regional Chamber Board, the Mindfulness Institute Board and its advisors, along with the Pontiac Promise Zone, are promising that we're working to make it an easier pathway for you to chart. So if we start this journey, we'll start with kindergarten readiness uh, and kindergarten connections and early childhood supports. We uh, currently have our graduate assistant participating at Peace Academy and Kids Corner in the city of Pontiac. Uh, we did this because we knew that male role models in early childhood are very important. And we wanted to make sure that our, our children had, um, sorry, our children had a, a male role model influence. And so we started this process at Peace Academy, which is one of the largest um, early child care centers in the city, and also at Kids Corner, which is in the, the heart of downtown. Um, and so what we saw and the reason why we did this was we know that zero to one, one to three, and four to seven are the most critical times of a child's life. And they set up a really great uh, opportunity for them to be successful in, in school and in, in the education system. And so we wanted to give them the best start possible. And uh, along with that, we partnered with the Mindfulness Institute to make sure that there's tools available for you and your child uh, in that journey. Judith, you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. So we, um, the Mindfulness Institute partners with HeartMath, and I'll put something in the link for you. Uh, in, in the chat for you. So for that early, that early child pre, pre you know, preschool, first grader, we think of them as the four to six year old, there is a Heart Smarts Adventure program. And that program is really a trauma informed program based on evidence and for really early childhood. And the children will learn about their, well, the children learn about how their emotions, you know, how to manage their emotions and how to find expressions uh, through their emotions and have compassion for themselves and others. And then we go on to the child, you know, the seven-year-old to the 10-year-old child with the Wise Heart Program. And that one is a heart-based, you know, social emotional learning program that helps children learn um, skills in self-regulation and communication and decision-making. So that's for the early children. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and as you can see, we have Pontiac Reads Level Up Literacy. So Level Up Literacy is our embedded literacy program. You can find that program housed at Bound Together, which is at the All Saints Church in Pontiac. You can find uh, Level Up Literacy with the Dream Center, which is uh, over on the east side uh, at the church uh, on the east side. And then you can also find it uh, at the United Wholesale Mortgage with the Pontiac United um, United. Uh, program. So we have embedded literacy where children can spend uh, up to 20 to 30 minutes a day during their program time to improve literacy outcomes for them, for themselves. So it's a really great opportunity. And so along with that, we created the Pontiac Parent Group. And I have one request of everyone. If you're not connected to the Pontiac Parent Group, we'll put in the chat how to connect with the Pontiac Parent Group. And then the second thing is, uh, second request is that we start meeting. So we have the parent group on Facebook and now it's time to kind of meet publicly uh, and face-to-face. -face. Uh, given what Dr. Tatum says 
Um, a lot of that takes place with parents who are concerned about their child's education. And we want to make sure we're providing the leadership for the parents to uh, advocate for their children at their particular school. And we know children from the city of Pontiac travel far and wide in Oakland County to attend school, whether they're at, they're at public, private, or charter schools. Um, and so we really want to make sure that our parents have the most powerful tools they can have to educate their children and to advocate for them at their schools. So once we get through literacy, um, we have the Math Counts program. And Math Counts is really designed to support students in that fourth through sixth grade spot to build a love and fondness for math, but also to build a proficiency. And one of the things I can tell you is math comes with practice, just as Dr. Tatum said, reading comes with practice. And so we really wanna focus on providing those practices uh, for students to become effective at mathematics as well as reading. Um, as we move along the journey, there's, as you can see, some road signs around Pontiac's Best Summer Ever, uh, Pontiac T Town Hall, which is tonight, and then Cut Up and Read. These are opportunities for you ongoingly through the year to participate and find out more and get updates and ask questions and connect with other parents. Uh, I have a seven-year-old, 13 and 14. Uh, they attend Lake Orion schools. And, um, you know, I know as a parent, it's not the easiest thing to have two teenagers. So if you have teenagers, God bless you. I know it's it's part of the journey, but it's uh, not as easy as a seven-year-old. Uh, and so in the middle school time, we really want to focus on career readiness. And we built the Nesby Junior Chapter to support students in looking at STEM careers for those opportunities as well as partnering with Michigan Works and other organizations that do Manufacturing Day and other activities while they're in school to give them career awareness about career opportunities within Oakland County and Southeast Michigan. Um, this year, we launched our Nesby Junior Chapter with our Higher Pontiac students. Higher Pontiac is a, is a paid developmental program for students starting in the uh, eighth grade, well, the graduating eighth graders. So this is a four-year program where students can come in uh, for an internship in the summer and learn more about engineering and the opportunities to build an engineering career. So if you have students who are interested in engineering, this might be a program for them. And then entrepreneurship college and skilled trades. Uh, we have a program that's starting in January called ACE Mentoring. That program is designed to help students who are interested in architecture, engineering, and construction. Um, and uh, our goal is to make sure students can critically think and collaborate with others to create great careers. And this is what we believe is the pathway to success. And someone asked, is it optional? And I'm like, no, it's not optional. <laughs> the pathway to success is not optional. And we really wanna make sure that students have the best of the best to succeed uh, in their career. So here's the our family program guide. So we have, again, Pontiac's Best Summer Ever, Higher Pontiac, Kindergarten Connections, and Level Up Literacy. We'll make sure this is emailed to all of you so you can use it at your discretion. Whoop. Here's a video of Kindergarten Connections. Roger. Raheem, Raheem. So maybe not here in the video, if you can just share that. Raheem, the Here, let me stop. Be quiet. See you. And you. She's sleeping. Okay, hold on, let me do it again. Here we go.
Okay, so thank you for sharing that video. That, that is what that is one of the programs, our kindergarten connections. We have launched, we launched that program last year and we built upon it. As you can see from our logos, that Michigan Learning Channel is one of our partners in this work and they joined us for that kindergarten connection so we can learn how to use the resources that are available free for our families. So it's a great resource. And our kindergarten connections is just, as you can see from the images, that the families really enjoy this time together. And we want to continue to build that up and grow that program. Next up that we have, it's the Level Up Literacy. Dominique mentioned that during our, during the pathway. And when you can see with the Lexia program, is that it involves the five components of reading. And these are research-based, so it's phonological awareness, finance, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. Dr. Tatum talked about those things, about making sure kids are reading so many words per day. And so this is one of the ways that we are lifting up literacy in those out of school spaces. And we're doing those programs at Dream Center, Bound Together, and We Love Lit launched a summer program where we use components from the Michigan Learning Channel, the Alexia program, and then we ended up with kids making sure they had library cards and they were checking out books and reading those books with volunteers. So that's one of our key programs. And we really researched those programs when with Dr. Tanya Chris from Oakland University and myself, we went and found out what computer adapted programs that are research-based that can move and grow students in those out of school spaces. So thank you. And as we think about some of the things, as we said, we promised to do today is that we're giving you three tips and these three tips goes from go beyond grades. Like one of the things that when we looked at the research that when we asked parents, like, what do you know about your child's reading? So, oh, they make good grades. They're making A's and B's. But ask the question, is your child on grade level? So that's the first thing. And the tip for that is grades are only part of the story. Ask teachers about different ways to know how your child is progressing, such as a benchmark test that helps teachers guide the instruction. After the A, the B is be in the know about your child's learning. You don't have to, to be a math or a reading expert to advocate for your child. By knowing what and how they are learning in the classroom, you can support their success. And I want to just go back and just expand on that B, being a no. One of the things, my mother was a single parent, and every summer, like we were not in a lot of after-school things, but during the summer, she took us to the library. And when we left out of that library, we had a pile of books. And during the summer, we read those books. And after a couple of weeks, we went back at that library again. That kept me from having any learning slides. So being to know about your child's learning and then execute the plan. And then C, continue to connect after conferences. We have those conferences at the beginning of the year and at the, at the end of the school year. But stay in communication with your child's teacher. Teachers say the number way to know how your child is progressing is to be in regular contact with the teacher, not just relying on the report card grades, because remember, the grades only tell part of the story. So Judith, do you want to talk a little bit about the teen program for social emotional intelligence? Yeah, that would be fabulous. Fabulous. So the teen program is called Wise Brain Smart Heart. I don't know if you want me to, you know, show it. I, I can show Yeah, it. I can stop. You can show it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So for the teen program, we're looking, you know, the teens include the four year old, the fourth, fourth grade on and um, Smart Brain Wise Heart is a an active program. 
it's interactive with the with the students. And I just wanted to show you um, here's what they actually can um, look at um, advancing in. And so they focus a lot of attention. They begin to focus their attention. They begin to uh, work with their emotional resilience. We uh, help them with responding versus reacting. So that helps with uh, decreasing impulse control. It helps them with anger management. It helps them to motive motivational in, in their success and be interested in that. And um, so you can see the problem solving and what you see with this young boy right here, he's interacting right now with the program. And what's really nice about it is it's measured, his little finger there is um, connected to that. It's measuring his coherence. So he's actually getting out of fight flight system, moving into his, his practice that we did with you uh, when we started the call. And he's watching in this activity things happening because he's getting more and more coherent. And then this particular program, um, it keeps the score, so to speak, over time. And they can watch their progress and their, imp their improved score for their heart coherence, which affects their social emotional intelligence. So this is really great. As we know, social emotional intelligence is the precursor. It's the indicator for greater success and happiness and ultimately school performance. And so he's in front of the M wave is where, where he's at now, but this is the program guide. And um, I'll put that link in the chat too. So you can take a look, closer look at, but this is what we do um, right up into high school. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Judith. So in our Higher Pontiac program, we asked the question of the students, which engineering role best expresses you? And it's an open-ended question. And once they answer the question, we send them out to further investigate what is that engineering role all about? And as you can see, these are some opportunities that they've had to work with robots. We visited uh, with the chief judge at the Pontiac District Court. Uh, Cynthia Walker. Um, we also visited GFL, which is our local uh, waste hauler and recycler. And the, here you see them working on different projects with it at the Pontiac Regional Chamber. So a uh, really great opportunity for students who are rising ninth graders uh, all the way up until they're in 12th grade. Uh, so this year we're working towards with the the students in uh, Nesby Junior Chapter working towards traveling to the 50th anniversary of the National Society of Black Engineers Conference, which will be in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, if you are interested in finding more, out more about uh, building an engineering community in Pontiac with us, uh, please just drop engineering in the chat and we'll have our president, Abu uh, Ture, reach out to you. Abu, are you still here? he was here um and we'll reach out to you and, and share more information about the chapter and, and the work that we're doing uh every summer we have pontiac's best summer ever we kick it off with our summer reading kickoff at the pontiac public library in partnership with them and then we have a multitude of events throughout the summer to share the success of stem in our community um our city has probably the most STEM jobs of any community uh, out in Oakland County. We have uh, three hospitals, engineering centers. We also have uh, science centers in our community. So it's a really great opportunity for our students to participate with the Wastewater Resource Commission, uh, Oakland Parks, and the Pontiac Public Library. So, Jude, if you want to talk about the tree. Do I want to talk about the tree? The yes. Parents? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, the Christmas tree. Yeah, yes. the holiday tree. Um, so at um, Whitmore, the, what is it? 13? Fillmore. Fillmore, I want to say Whitmore. Fillmore 13, there you go. I see it's right there. Um, we, we put a tree up and you'll see the word joy all over the tree and you'll see these wonderful peppermint candy, the peppermint candy canes are on the tree. And there's lots and lots of books hanging from the tree. The not books per exactly, but the cards, the face of the book is hanging from the tree, just getting excited about the joy of reading. And so that's the theme of our tree 
is the joy of reading. And there's a little pillow there because like nighttime readings, sometimes the most cozy uh, to enjoy. And so, uh, and to all a good night, I think our little pillow says. And uh, so we hope you'll go and just vote for that tree and, you know, just show your excitement uh, for your child's deepening their ability to read and write. That's that. Thanks, Ruth. In the corner, there's an opportunity to donate to Pontiac, uh, Pontiac Reads and the PUEC. And also there's an opportunity to vote for uh, the Christmas tree at the Fillmore 13. Yes, we were in sixth place last year and we want to be in first place. Because you see all these You can tell who programs. wants to be a winner. You can yes, tell you, who wants to be a winner. Yes, I just, I want, I, we want to be a winner because when you vote for us, we can be able to fund these programs and grow it, make sure it's... In, Make it sure it's around for more students. So you can tell that, who play video games. You can tell who play video games because this is our segment. Yes, and um, I am even more excited to share with you about the African American Reads. And Pontiac Reads has partnered with Oakland Schools for three consecutive years. And this year, we are hosting author and illustrator Don Tate. He just came out with the book. Is newly published this summer, and it's called Jerry Changed the Game. And on this, this book, we're going to not only talk about Dante's book, but while we're there for the evening, we're going to have a STEMI truck available so you can get a tour of the STEMI truck. You're going to learn about all the different career paths, ways. So we could be talking with kids, not waiting to middle school and high school, talking about STEM careers. We're starting right there at the elementary level. It's going to be a very exciting night. The registration is available. Some of you that I see on this Zoom call have participated in African American reading. It is going to be an amazing time. Still my truck, dinner, and of course, you get to take a book home, one book per family while supplies last. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Well, Chanel, are you there? <laughs> I am here. <laughs> I'm outside walking. All right, Cuddle Up and Read. Cuddle Up and Read is our book box program. And it's designed to create moments where reading is a family event. So each quarter, roughly, we have a book box giveaway. You can enter to win a book box, which comes with hot chocolate, a set of books, a blanket, and other trinkets that we put into the box. So it's a really fun way to experience reading with your child. And it's free. You just enter to win. And like I said, we do it quarterly. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have March is Reading Month. So that's up and coming to be here before you know it. But we showcase different leaders in our community and they read a book. One of my favorite read alouds is my very own Pastor Jones reading the book to reading the book about Martin Luther King's legacy to students. And he just did an amazing job reading. So if you're not familiar with our YouTube channel, subscribe and see all the amazing leaders that we have in our city that's promoting readings. So if you're on your way to the grocery store, on a trip, play those YouTube videos and listen to that. Just your child listen to those different community leaders read aloud a book to them. And there is evidence of listening and looking at the book is a powerful tool for students as well. And so we show the book and you can see the listen to the reader as well. Um, Ashlyn, there is a, Jennifer has put a question there. I think it's perfect for you because you often talk about it. Uh, grow your own teacher program. It seems like a great way to get some students interested in teaching and remaining in the community down the road as teachers. So I know you like to talk about that. Just want to make sure you saw it. Great. Right. Parent Connections time. What's the most thrilling thing you picked up from today's talk? And what's the first step you're you're taking to use it? Please place this in the chat. We'd love to hear your response about what did you pick up today that you can use for your family and your children. And then I wanted to make sure that you also knew that you were invited to a parent group. If you're interested, also write the word parent in the chat. Um, we also follow a, a research-based program from HeartMath. I'll put that in the chat for parents. 
And it's really about really nurturing your own emotional wellness, you know, in the family so that you can be all that you can be, you know, for your child and for their development. So it just the program itself, you'll learn to even take your take it to the next level, managing your feelings of overwhelm or worry about your child's safety or well-being. It helps to support your child's mental health, you know, and the ability to express their emotions in a healthy way. You'll also discover how you can help them to reduce feelings of your, your feelings of impatience or frustration. Sometimes we go there, anger, you know, allowing for a deeper communication and connection with your child. And then it'll also help them to sharpen your parental intuition to make the best decisions for you and the children moment to moment. So we invite you to, again, put the word parent in the chat if you're interested in being a part of our parent group. And as mentioned, there is the parent um, social media network. Other ways to participate. So we have the parent, finding a parent newsletter that comes out about once a month. It's a great opportunity for you to connect uh, and learn more about what opportunities exist within our community. So if you scan the QR code, you will get to that. And then there's also the parent, finding a parent group. opportunities there was that us <laughs> that was us oh, okay you're like what was that i know i'm like is mine doing that as i talked about and shared with you i am the founder of we love lit building literacy pathways we have three programs that we have been working on for the last couple of years. The Heart of Literacy program is an opportunity that we partner with local daycare centers and we do workshops for families. And then while we're having those workshops for families, we're also building their home libraries. That's just last month, we had a healthy Halloween where we brought in different healthy organizations across the city of Pontiac. Delta was one of those partners that provided books as well as toothbrushes to remind kids to, to not only read, but also to take care of their teeth. And last- Set one, story, set two, my favorite book, set yes. one, set two. <laughs> and then the third program that we have is your story representative. Last year, we worked with local authors in our state and they really planted the seed that our kids can be readers and writers. And that was- amazing thing. If you haven't had a chance to check out We Love Lit website, you can see those exciting programs that, and you can see how we're on the pathway and making sure that our kids have those amazing experiences today and they can have the choices they want in the future. Math course. Has anyone heard about this program? This is an amazing program offered by Oakland University. This next year will be, I think, the fourth year of this program. It's designed for middle schoolers. So sixth grade all the way up to, I believe, ninth grade. Uh, the red shirts are the TAs and the leaders. And so when students actually complete the program, they get to be a TA if they choose to and uh, work the, in the summer. I think it's a four-week program for the summer. Put in the chat if you've heard of math course. Just put math course. Um, and we're gonna go to, I'm gonna stop this for a second um, and check one thing. So I wanna just ask um, if anyone had to guess, what is the thing that we sell the most of to other communities in, from Southeast Michigan to other communities across the United States and across the world? What is the thing we sell the most of? If people had to guess, what do you think we sell the most of to other communities? You can put it in the chat. You can say it out loud. Dominic, could you could you repeat the question from the beginning, please? Yes. In Southeast Michigan, as a community, what do you think we sell the most of to other communities across the United States and across the world? Across the world. Cars. <laughs> Automobiles. That's right. Now. There's two sets of people who make sure that happens. There's the UAW, right? And then there's the engineers. So back in 1970, 1990s, there was over 
1 million UAW workers. Today, there's less than 500,000 that work for the big three. So one of the things that Oakland County has been really successful at is being a engineering center. Um, there's over 75,000 engineers in Oakland County. And so Southeast Michigan is one of the largest engineering centers in the world, uh, along with uh, Seattle, Washington, which is where they make aircrafts, uh, Silicon Valley, which is where they make uh, software, and then Atlanta is also an engineering center, as well as uh, the D.C. metro area, D.C. So there's uh, quite a few metro centers. And one of the things that we are, we're committed to is that your students have the opportunity to be in STEM-based careers. And the top four industries in Southeast Michigan are automotive, healthcare, government, higher education. Those are the top four areas of employment in Southeast Michigan. So uh, two of those areas are STEM-based areas. And so we really want to make sure your children have the opportunity to connect and engage in, in a STEM-based career. Um, and so we're really working towards putting the literacy up front and center because we know to be engaged in STEM careers, you have to have a high level of proficiency or advanced literacy, as Dr. Tatum talked about. Uh, for being engaged in STEM careers. So I just want to know from you, and you could drop in the chat or raise your hand, how many of you are interested in your children being in a STEM career when they graduate or being on a pathway to a STEM career? How many we get, Ashlyn? I'm looking at raised hands. So I see about a handful of raised hands and then I'm looking in the chat. I see about three or four. Okay. Well, if you're interested in that, I would love for you to register for the upcoming uh, African-American read-in, it would be a great opportunity to connect with you personally and your child personally to learn more about STEM. Uh, and it's a, it's a really great opportunity. We're now going to uh, pick a winner for our $100 gift card. So let's do that. Ashley, you want to, if there are any questions, can you see if there's any questions in the chat? Yeah, we I missed? was certainly, yes. Well, the if you way, have any questions, put them in the chat or you can just say them out loud. Ms. Richardson, when you say will the link be shared, you mean to the slide deck? Are there which one? Oh, for the STEM program. We'll be sharing on um, our one page with all our different programs. Follow up with an email either this evening or tomorrow morning. We'll also include the registration link for the African American read in as well. Okay, I just had to add a couple more names that came in. Um, all right, I think that's all of them. Share your, share your screen so we can see the. I will. So, someone asked. Yeah. Um, about what, what do the, the specific recommendations of Dr. Tatum, what he said about how often to have your, your children reading and writing. Does anyone remember? 
I do remember. That was so, my question. I just wanted to repeat how often Dr. Tatum recommends children should read and write for development. Yeah. So I, re I recall him making the statement. I just didn't yeah. capture it. Okay. Ashlyn, do you want to respond to that? I could tell if you don't. Yeah, I can um, think Jennifer, like he said, reading at least 500 words a day. Reading 500 words and writing yeah. 75. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. This is like the funnest tool we've ever found. <laughs> so if you want to use this tool, we highly recommend it. You could probably use it over Christmas. It's like What's that wheel game that we used to watch? Wheel of Fortune. So Wheel it's a really great to use it for your Christmas gifts. You get this one. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. You got to be present to win. Bamar Ture. Bamar Ture here. Oh, they were here and they left off. Are they here? No? Yes? No? No. Nope. All, right. All right. Missed your chance. Let's see. I could take their name out, right, Chanel? Yes. All I right, think it would have. You can just take it out, yeah. All right, here we go. All right, so one more time. Must be present to win. Jasmine Hardiman. Is she here? <laughs> no, yes? Yes, she is here. She She's is here? here? She is here. You are a winner. Congratulations. We will email you your $100 gift card to Amazon. I know everyone loves Amazon because it's nothing like getting the gifts at home when you arrive home. Uh, so we really appreciate you coming out tonight. And thanks for sticking with us all the way through. Harmony, right, do you? one more and we'll give away a book box. How about that? All right, do one more. Man, Chanel, you're very do generous. Do one more. One more. Okay, it's here we the, go. It's the Christmas season for a book box. Okay, Christmas season. Or holiday season. Miss Tamara Powell, she here? Yes, no? Nope. All right, got to go again. Jasmine Pear? Yes, no? No? Doesn't sound yes. like no. it. Doesn't sound like All it. Right. Rhonda. Rhonda is indeed here. Thanks right. for being with us. Awesome. Well, we will mail you out a book box for your pleasure of reading. So we appreciate your time and being here and Thank you for doing it. All right, guys, are there any more questions? All right, well, I have one one comment. Um, Take it uh, off so we can see each other. Okay, let me stop that. Stop sharing that. Uh, so I have one more comment. We, we uh, at the Pontiac Regional Chamber are very clear that the top corporations want to work with uh, our community and make sure our children have the greatest opportunity to work for their organization or to be a supplier to their organization or to be a leader in the community. Uh, you know, we're thankful for General Motors, the Bomber Group for gifting or granting us $150,000 to build this program for the city of Pontiac. And it's because of them and the extraordinary volunteers, Ashlyn, Andrea Meyer, Tanya, Chanel, Afis, 
Judith, and many, many more volunteers, Angela Tab, um, who have supported the work of making this a, a great deal. Uh, we thank Rosanna, we thank United Wholesale Mortgage, um, and Rosanna's from General Motors for all their contributions. And, you know, these corporations are really on our side to make this thing work for the greater good of the community. And so we're really, <laughs> so funny, uh, we're really interested <laughs> in um, your support in doing that. We know that you want the best for your children and uh, we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to support your children in shining in school and being productive as a citizen. So um, we really are inspired by that. And I'll leave you with this, this piece of information. Chanel and I worked with young people who are between the ages of 18 and 24 and we realize that some of these young men will never have the opportunity to achieve higher heights because they work in organizations that won't give them that opportunity. And so we went out 10 years ago, recruited young men who worked at Bell Tire and other organizations like Bell Tire and were able to coach and develop them to get jobs with OEM, OEM, OEM companies. And that transform their ability to make money. So they went from making $10 an hour to making $18 to $20 an hour with the same education and the same background. And so we're really interested in supporting our community, the city of Pontiac and the regional area and making sure our children get the best of the best. And we know the corporations are here to support that. And so we need your support in making sure that happens because they're your children. And so if you'd like to join forces with us, Right. Just type power in the chat and we'll make sure we reach out to you uh, to tell you how you can volunteer or support the effort of what Dr. Tatum talked about around literacy. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate you have questions. We'll be here. Have a great night. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. And thanks to all of the staff and presenters for the great information. Thank you. Hello, I have a question, if you don't mind. Absolutely, that's what we're here for. Yes. Okay. I did um, send an Just email. Stop the recording, Dominique. I will. Go ahead. Okay. I did send 